Up next, a review of the extermination expansion for Horizons. All right, so the last time we talked about Horizons, we were joined in our chat room here on Twitch by the designer himself, Levi Moe, which was pretty awesome. By the end of the interview, uh, or the topic, Levi got in touch with me and offered to send me a copy of Extermination for me to review, which of course I agreed to, and that's where the copy I'm talking about today came from, and the concept of full disclosure. This platform has been great for interaction, the kind you don't normally get in the podcast format outside of a live show in front of an audience. Yeah, tonight being a perfect example of that with a very crowded lobby, it's awesome. So Horizons Extermination was designed by Levi Moe, uh, features art by Mihailo Dimitrevsky, better known as Miko, was published in 2019 by Daily Magic Games. Now, it is worth noting that this pack was, was included in the original Kickstarter version of Horizons, and it is available separately for people like me who have the retail version of Horizons. you got to buy them separate, which is what I didn't do because I have a review copy, but what I have the retail version, not the Kickstarter version. If you want to see what comes in this expansion pack, head over to YouTube and check out our unboxing video. For those who haven't had a chance to watch that yet, what do you get in Extermination? All right, so the first thing that came out, because I opened up this little, it's a small card pack and I kind of shook it. The first thing that came out was a folded rule sheet. Uh, it's two-sided, glossy, really nice large font, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, easy to read even with my old eyes. The rules were followed by a sealed pack of cards and a plastic baggie with some tiles in it. Now, this was cool to see because the tiles were actually pre-punched, so that was neat. I expected to see punch boards if there was going to be anything to be punched. Uh, the tiles are alternate Sun Star tiles. Um, getting back to the cards, there were five new starter allies, one for each of the original species from the game, and then five new Viliox allies that are added to the original allied decks. One new card for each deck. And that's it. Like I said, pretty small box. Sometimes it doesn't take much to improve a game, but... What does extermination add to Horizons? So getting back to that podcast where we were talking about Horizons, uh, that was episode 61, Gateway to Area Control, if anyone wants to check that out. Now, I didn't know Levi was in the chat when I started the review. And while my review was mostly positive, I did feel the game lacked punch and that it was just, it was missing something. Now, one of the things I found missing is that everyone and everything online and everything about Horizons is talking about how it's a 4X game, how you get the feel of a 4X game in only an hour. But when I played, it only featured 3X. You could explore, you could exploit, and there was definitely expansion, but there was no extermination. So when I mentioned this in the, in the, during the review, Levi spoke up in the chat and asked, do you own the expansion? And I'm like, no, I didn't even know there was an expansion. That expansion, of course, being this expansion, which is, of course, called Extermination, which, of course, adds that last X that I found missing in Horizons. So he basically said, you don't have a full game without having this expansion, and strongly suggested giving the game another chance after trying it. And, well, that's why we're here now, is I got a copy of Extermination and gave the game another chance. So no longer a triple X game, we now have all four X's. And for our topic on problematic, potentially problematic content, see episode I don't know, uh, <laughs> not that kind of X's. Uh, four X's in Explore, Exterminate, Expand, and Exploit. Uh, the Extermination Expansion Pack actually has three different modules that can be used together or separately. This seems to be an ongoing trend. Almost every, every expansion we've talked about lately seems to be done this way, and I dig it. Uh, the first module is six new stars or suns. To use these at the start of the game, you just mix these suns with the suns from the base game and then have each player draw one randomly out of the bag. And this way you should end up with a mix of the original suns, which do nothing special. They're just there as a, a, a basically a placement where you, excuse me, where you place other tiles around. Um, and the new suns. And while each of these new suns breaks the game rules in some way, so, for example, there's a sun that only allows certain types of planets around them. There are suns that limit the number of planets. So instead of holding six, they only hold four. Uh, there's a sun that causes your metal production to double. And there's another one that your energy production doubles. And then finally, I think the last one is one that makes um, colonies worth more on each of the planets around that sun. So this is a big deal as it could potentially really change your ability yeah. to score some of the mission cards. Yeah, it, it's, it's a significant change, but not 
it still has the same feel. It's cool. The second module is a set of new starter allies. Now, when you start the game, you give everyone a standard starter ally. That, that, that's from the base game. But now you also give them a random alien from this new set. Players then pick which one they want to use. And what's neat here is there's one of each of the alien types that are in the later allies in the other part of the game. So there's an ally for each of the different five player actions. So it starts off so that every player, if they use this new ally, is going to have a little bit of a bump in that particular action. So a little more variety and potential asymmetry to kick the game off, though this does obviously benefit players with more playtime and strategies in mind. Yeah, definitely true. And that's something I've seen of my plays recently. So what I've done is when playing with players who are, are mixed experience, I just tell the new players, stick with the original human ally. Now, the final module is the one that adds the fourth X, extermination to the game. And this is a new set of five. They're called Viliox aliens. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, Diana likes to call them Space Deadpool because they're red and black. And they're also... Uh, Someone, someone else called them elithids because they got the whole Cthulhu tentacle thing going on. Now, there's one Viliox for each of the existing ally decks, so one for each of the different player actions, and these new aliens just get shuffled in with those. Now, each of these features some form of player versus player style action or ability. One lets you replace an opponent's collector with one of your own. Another causes opponents to discard missions. There's even one that lets you terraform a planet, which literally flips the tile over and destroys everything on it. Now, every single one of these new powers comes with a significant cost to offset their pretty nasty nature. Now, most of these cost at least 10 resources to use or cost knowledge, and knowledge in this game are victory points. Now, and this seems like a huge deal to me, as when I played, you would tend to system hop. If things mm -hmm. were going against you somewhere and, and you were losing the area, you'd just shift focus off to another uh, mm -hmm. area, whereas now you have a chance for a price to deal a blow against your opponents mm -hmm. and have a chance to regain a system that in the previous version was lost to you. Yeah, it, it significantly changes the feel of the game. Now, I think it's pretty clear in my original review, if you go back and listen to that, I think you probably even tell it my voice at the beginning of this interview, I didn't love Horizons. It's a good game. It's a very solid game. It even has some interesting new mechanics I've never seen before, which I always love, with the way the aliens work and how you build your little alien tableau to key off your actions. It's very neat. And I've enjoyed the game every time I played it. And I wouldn't say no if someone came out and said, hey, can you teach me Horizons? Or if they brought their copy and wanted to play it. But it just wasn't great. In a world with 5,000 new games coming out each year, games really need to have something, a wow factor, a je ne sais quoi, that makes them stand out from the crowd. And Horizons just didn't have that. Now, as a sci-fi fan, now I've only tried it once myself. I really did enjoy it, mm. but there was one aspect of it that was problematic for me, and it actually wasn't a lack of, lack of extermination. Yeah. But for you, does extermination add that wow factor to Horizons? At this point, I'd say it does. Like, it makes Horizons a significantly better game. Uh, it's much... I've much more enjoyed my plays of Horizons since adding extermination to my set. Games have been tighter, player interaction is greatly increased, and the replayability is even up there with the new asymmetry and the new suns changing up the, the board setup at the start of every game. Now, as Levi and the name of the expansion indicate, this really does add that fourth X that it, it, it was missing. The Viliox extermination, it's right there in the name of the box and it's right there in the gameplay. But I also like the other additions. The Suns in particular are a welcome addition. They make each game feel different and more interesting. And as Sean noted earlier, they can make some of the missions easier to accomplish. And of course, I love the new starter allies because anyone who listens to this podcast or who reads my blog knows I love asymmetry and anything adding more asymmetry to a game is pretty much a thumbs up from me. No surprise there to our regulars. <laughs> now, Horizons does not fix everything, though, because my... One of my biggest complaints about Horizons is the mission cards and what they're worth compared to what you need to do to score them. And there is nothing in this expansion that fixes that. Overlooking a problem that this expansion isn't designed to address because there's nothing in here to talk about the mission cards, I have to say that this is an excellent expansion pack for Horizons. I would go so far to say it's a must-have expansion. Like, it improves the game so much that Daily Magic should just do what they did with the Kickstarter and bundle them together. If you buy Horizons, you get it. Up the price by five bucks or whatever it takes to offset the, the loss and just sell them together. Yep. 
No, absolutely. And I, I suspect they didn't for, uh, for reasons we'll, we'll touch off in a moment. But for me, uh, even with this new expansion, and I, and I agree, I think this really does add some, some nice content to it, uh, the fact of the mission cards still keeps this game from being something that I just really want to have on my table. Right. Yeah, I actually think what I would love to see, and I was kind of hoping Levi would join the chat tonight, or hopefully he listens to this at some point, is I would love to see a replacement pack of mission cards. I noted that on the blog post too. I'm like, that's what I would like more than this extermination is give me a set of rebalanced mission cards because every game I played with it, someone has pointed out a card that made no sense to them. And it, it, it is one of the things keeping this game down. Now, there is one other thing I do want to warn people about. If your group does not like player versus player conflict, if they don't like that style of take that player interaction, you're not going to like these Billy Axe cards. One player I played with absolutely hated them, like almost walked away from the game. They loved everything else about the expansion. They loved the new Suns. They loved the new starter allies. They're actually really in favor of having um, direction at the beginning of the game. They really liked being able to specialize something. But he's the type of player who doesn't like games where you can betray each other or backstab each other. And this is something that expansion is designed to add to the game. So if you don't like that, you're probably not going to want to use the Viliox. Overall, though, I strongly recommend picking up Extermination, just in general. If you like Horizons, this is a no-brainer. Go out and get it. If, if you like Horizons that much, maybe you back the Kickstarter and already have it. Great. But if you don't find this, it's, it's available dirt cheap, surprisingly, right now. Now, if you're like me and thought Horizons was good but missing something, I think it's worth picking up Extermination and seeing if it kicks the game up a notch for you as it did for me. Now, if you don't like Horizons at all, I don't think this is going to fix the game for you. If you weren't a fan of the original, this isn't going to somehow magically make it better. Now, if you've never played Horizons, I actually do recommend picking up both at once, uh, especially at the prices they are on online stores right now, is go get a copy of Horizons, grab Extermination at the same time, and use those new rules right from the start. Just if you hate PvP, if your group doesn't like that in-your-face conflict, maybe just use the new Suns and the new Allies. All right, well, for a slightly more in-depth look at Horizons Extermination, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com and just click on Reviews.